Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm David Mee from MAPR. Firstly, I'd like to thank Meridian to allow me to present today on the, at the event. Um, just a very quick uh, intro to MAPR. We're an 800 strong uh, organization based out of Silicon Valley with uh, offices all over the world in most of the major cities. Um, what I'm gonna be talking about today, and I'm not using slides, I'm just talking, which, because I've seen some of the slide lag, so I thought I'd just chat as it were, um, is, is around data logistics within the um, connected and auto autonomous vehicle sector. Um, it's not the sexiest of uh, things to talk about, but essentially what drives uh, data into the more exciting things that we see around the event today. So what do I mean by data logistics? Well, when we talk to a number of OEMs, one of their key issues is that everything is actually done in isolation. There's silos of data in one country, there's silos of data within a single country, uh, and data scientists are working on one project, but they're not linking up that data to, to other organizations within their uh, partnerships or within the company themselves. So what MAPAR uh, are, are talking to and actually delivering with uh, OEMs across the globe is what we call a data fabric. And what do I mean by a data fabric? Well, a data fabric is the ability to link all data, every cloud, wherever it may be, with on-premise um, solutions to actually deliver a single view of that data. And why is that important? Well, the main reason for the importance of that is this siloed approach means that many opportunities are actually lost when uh, organizations aren't actually sharing data. Um, one particular uh, project we're working on with the uh, German OEM is around the uh, autonomous and also the connected uh, car capability to um, have cars in, in many continents, in many climates, and data is actually being produced from these cars uh, with the ability to obviously have very interesting information, but there's a time lag in getting that data to the data scientists to actually create new algorithms, uh, new driving models, uh, improve the efficiency and capability of the cars. And what we're doing with those organizations is actually creating what we call edge units. And what I mean by edge is units that can actually sit in cars, can actually talk to uh, a single data fabric or data platform and create a single view of that data. So what it actually means is organizations can actually do real-time analytics, real-time machine learning with the capability then to offload main data to their HQs for their data scientists to work on. One of the key problems that data scientists tend to have um, is the actual logistics themselves. Data scientists are very clever people. Uh, they're paid very well to do amazing things in cars, but typically they spend about 90% of their time actually data wrangling and try to move data from one place to another, um, tie it all together in a, in a view that they can actually run their analytics on. Now, that takes time, that takes effort, and there's also the competitive edge that can be lost if the availability is not there to, to deal with that. Um, another issue that we're, we're seeing now is with the adoption of cloud is the multi-cloud strategy of many organizations. So for example, a certain German OEM that we work with, um, they will be using in one country a, an Azure platform, uh, in another country an AWS platform, and another country a Google platform. And because they're developing applications as part of that data platform, they're able to actually move between seamlessly between cloud operations uh, without the need to reinvent the wheel as such every time they move from one cloud to another. One of the other key issues that you, you have with a siloed approach is when you move data around, there's both a governance and a security issue that you're just moving data around a network. By actually keeping everything into a single bubble on a data platform, this, this actually ensures that the data is actually secure, and more importantly, there's a system of record so as data moves onto a platform, it's managed all the way through, uh, and you're able to audit it and actually create a governance around the data that you're actually capturing. Big data, amazing term, we hear it all the time. What is big data? I've been hanging around data now for 25 plus years, and uh, essentially big data, when I got into it, was there was lots of terabytes of data. 
Now we've got lots of petabytes of data, and um, again, for the same German OEM, we're now scaling to exabytes of data. So there's huge amounts of data being stored from multiple sources, and uh, as typical with data is, probably 95% of the data is just run-of-the-mill data, don't need to do a huge amount with it, it hasn't got the real uh, information that we need, but it's actually getting that 5% of data that data scientists and the analysts that can work on to create new applications, to improve the, um, the vehicles. Uh, and, it's, and it's not just about cars, it's about the batteries, it's about the drivetrains, everything that the data is actually creating. So when we're scaling up to uh, exabyte level, um, that's huge amounts of data that are very expensive to store. And what you need is the ability for a single platform to actually tier data. So when I get data off of a car, it's hot. It's really exciting. We're, we're doing our analytics and capability around that. But probably after a few days, it may go off to another department for more long-term analysis. And then for compliance reasons, it may go off to another site for it to actually be um, stored in cheaper storage. So we saw in the early days the, uh, the advent of Hadoop and, uh, and large data lake projects. Um, these were great, but essentially they were batch-based solutions. So you put data in, you pulled it out, you run some analytics on there for your organization, but it was very much in the past. What we're seeing a lot more now um, as part and parcel of data logistics is real-time data. So the key to creating a data fabric to actually creating a, a, a true data platform is the ability to deal with all sorts of files. And I, and I break them, into, them down into three categories. So there are standard files, so this could well be uh, information that's coming in from video, so non-structured data. Uh, there's database files that may well be coming off, coming off of operational systems. And then there's event data, and this is the stuff that's really starting to get exciting now. So this is the real-time log data, this is the real-time uh, imaging data that's coming along, that organizations, certainly in, in, in the cab space, are looking to actually run the models on the cars themselves or, or on the vehicles themselves, but also then delivering that out to the whole mobility space. So conversations that we're having where Cars are actually doing things. They're looking to then talk to things like street furniture to identify if there's an accident up ahead, for saving energy in relation to turning when there's cars not around, but when they are around, there's signals coming off of that. But with all of these signals that are moving around, there's a, a risk of a breach, as it were, or, or a security risk. So it's about actually managing that data under a single platform. Now, data science, and, and I'll come on to that because Essentially, that's the sexy bit of data logistics. So the, the ability for people to spend more of their time actually in the, in the weeds of the data uh, and not, as I said earlier, spending time actually pushing all this data together. So what we're trying to do with, with our partners uh, and our OEMs is reduce that time to value. So customers are actually uh, seeing the benefits to the, the cars as they're using them. Uh, the ability to actually uh, innovate quicker, but also, which almost sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, but to fail faster. One of the big issues in this industry is that you can go through a long-term project and then the capabilities realized, are realized that it's just not possible, but you've spent millions of dollars in actually doing that. So that ability to use new technology, um, um, virtualization technology that can actually build the uh, applications that you want up quickly, but also bring them down very quickly. It also means as well for things such as um, personal data or data that can't leave the EU, for example, if you've got all of your data on a single platform and your logistics are built in a way that everything is connected together, everything sits there, you can actually sovereignize that data. So again, another big question we're having, certainly in the connected space with the OEMs, is we have data that is sitting on our systems, um, but we don't want it to go out to the US or we don't want it to go anywhere else. So the ability to actually put a governance plan in that says data that's sitting on a platform can be viewed by the right people and rules are put in place. But doing it under a single uh, solution as opposed to lots of point solutions. And we all know with point solutions that there's, there's many points of, um, 
uh, of failure as such. Uh, typically, when you're, you're putting together a big data project, you're running 20 different you know, compute units or clusters, whatever you want to call them. You want to connect them all together, and then somebody decides they're going to upgrade the software on one of them in one particular department, and it knocks everything out. And it's a big issue. Why, whereas having a, a data fabric that actually sits with open technology as well as enterprise technology, always being kept up to date with the latest updates, and most importantly, high availability and disaster recovery built into a solution that means that even when you're upgrading, you don't need to lose the system when it's being used. Now at the moment, a lot of these systems are um, in, de in development. Some are moving into production now, certainly in the connected space. But certainly from our point of view, excuse me, um, it's, it, 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 it really is around um, the ability for single view of the data, governance on that data, and security. Because there are so many stakeholders in an organization that manage that data. And, and certainly from uh, MAPAR's side of things, I think I'm just coming up to about 10 minutes now, um, we're looking to work with organizations like Meri uh, Meridian Mobility to deliver the connections. I mean, we're already looking at now, um, just talking my initial conversations, there are four test beds at the moment um, that are all running their data individually, so they're siloing that data. What could actually happen if all that data was brought together, the right bits were shared with one another, and you can actually share the experiences from one test bed to another? Now, granted, they're all working on different areas, but then bring in, for example, all the third-party data, the weather data, the traffic data, and all those different things under a single data platform really does create that true data fabric. What I've been talking today about, there's a, um, there's a book. I don't know if there are any data people in the audience. If there's not, I got away with it. Uh, <laughs> but, but essentially, um, we got an uh, ex-Sheffield um, um, University uh, data scientist based out in Silicon Valley, uh, a guy called Ted Dunning. And he does a lot of work with the automotive industry about actually improving the data science capability. And he's the, he's the guy that came up with this 90% after working with them about the data wrangling. Um, if you'd like to know more about what we're doing, um, drop me an email, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm happy to send you a copy of the book as well. It's a great read if you're into this stuff or you can pass it on to your data scientists. They will really enjoy it. Um, and, and that's everything from me. Uh, any questions from anyone?